So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hello, everybody, and welcome to For the Love of Pomegranate podcast. I hope you all are enjoying the World Cup, and I hope you all enjoyed um, Argentina versus Croatia. God, I nearly forgot who, who was playing tonight. Argentina versus Croatia. And seeing Emmy Martinez take uh, what I feel is his rightful place in the World Cup final, um, I pinned my colours to the mast early on. I thought that I, I wanted to see uh, Lionel Messi uh, win a World Cup, and I think that... Um, for the talent that that man has, um, for me, he definitely goes down as the most talented footballer of all time. Um, but look, as I say, there's there's lots of different metrics people will discuss him under, but I think his close control, uh, his body, the way that he can actually control his body movements, he's, 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 uh, yeah, he's just a fantastic footballer. We don't know. You need to go into the ins and outs of... Um, of Lionel Messi, everybody knows he's a good footballer, and it will go on until the day that, uh, till the day that we're all cold on the ground, it will be asked whether it's him or Ronaldo is the best footballer uh, of all time. And for me, I think it's Lionel Messi. Um, but as I say, um, you guys are open to your own opinions as well. But uh, he will play in a World Cup final. Absolutely delighted to see it, and delighted for our club, Manami Martinez as well, who's going to be standing in between posts in the World Cup final. Absolute honor. Not a lot of people in this life in their lifetimes get to play in a World Cup final. It happens once every four years. I saw a beautiful photo of him four years ago. Emmy Martinez and his brother were at the World Cup and they took a photo uh, together in the stands watching Argentina. And then this year, his brother was taking a photograph in the stands with Emmy Martinez warming up in goals. And uh, it was just a brother on his own in the stands. I thought it was an actually beautiful photograph. It just shows the strides that Emmy Martinez has made. So fair play to him. And he's going to be playing in the World Cup final um, this coming weekend. But today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, a spurious link. I think it is fair to say. Um, you guys know me now at this stage. If a player comes across the desk and it is, uh, it's mentioned with Aston Villa, I'm really interested in what players are out there in this world. Whether this person signs or not is irrelevant to me. I want to look and see what the situation is, what he brings, why we potentially are being linked to him. Um, some people will say that he's crap. Some people will say, why are we signing an unproven entity? Some people will say then when we when we get linked to proven entities, we, that we'll never sign them because they're going to go to a way better team because they've been linked to the X team and Y team. It's going to be a perpetual emotion kind of machine here. We will look at players as always. We will take... Uh, um, we, we'll take kind of a bird's eye view into some and we'll take a more in-depth view into others and this guy, Terry Moffey, a Nigerian striker playing with Lorien has um, has kind of reached a height this year that, uh, that people have been expecting him to reach for quite a while uh, only 23 years of age, as I say, Nigerian striker, six foot two. He's a bit of a different striker than we're going to see, um, or than we've we we have seen. A bit of a different striker than we have at the club already. So let's take a little look and see what he will what he potentially could offer us. It's um it's by no means uh, that he will uh, will sign for Aston Villa, but his price tag, the team that he's playing for currently already, the form that he's showing already, um, would fit the profile of a player that Aston Villa, um. Would be able to would be able to entice to the club. We did the Joe Felix podcast previously as well. Um, you know, we all know that he went for 120 million euros um, from Benfica to to Atletico Madrid. A lot of people balked at, at at the price Aston Villa would have to pay. And in the podcast, that's what we said. Um, if he ends up at Aston Villa, fantastic. If he doesn't, well, then no, we didn't lose anything by by looking into him because he's a completely different player to to um, anyone we have and he's a completely different player to Terry Moffey as well um, who we will take a look at in uh, in a minute. Just a little bit on, on Terry Moffey um, has taken <clears throat> how will I say it, he's taken a different route into European football and he had not even turned 17 when he, when he joined um, out of Nigeria when he joined a team in Lithuania whose, t whose name I cannot pronounce and uh, he had a lot of visa issues, a lot of passport issues, and um, 
uh, just essentially realistically just because of his work permit issues and so on like that uh, being so young joining a team in Lithuania and it delayed his debut made his debut then moved on actually to another team in Lithuania and um ended up scoring uh, I think it was 20 goals let me just look it up I don't want to give it yeah 20 goals in 29 games um was uh w- was what he scored for a team called Ritteria if You'll, if you'll excuse my Lithuanian pronunciation, if you'll excuse my Lithuanian pr- pronunciation, um, but yes, he scored twenty goals, twenty nine games for them. Made him, uh, got him a move to uh, Belgium to another team who I can never pronounce. I never remember how to uh, to pronounce it. I think it's Kartrich. I'm not hundred percent sure, but uh, scored nine, scored five and nine for them, and immediately got a move to Lorient. Uh, where he's uh, scored in the league, he scored 32 goals in 83 games um, for Lorient so far. 23 years of age, as I mentioned, nine go- nine games for Nigeria, scoring three goals as well. He's six foot two, and he predominantly plays uh, as a striker in a two or in a three, as we will see here for Lorient. Um, very, very well, well thought of from the point of view of look, he's not. We're not. We're not thinking of him in the same vein as as people like Julian Alvarez, but he has been. Um, <clears throat> He has been um, been somebody who who scouts have had their eye on. Obviously, when you score twenty goals in twenty nine games, even albeit in the Lithuanian uh, Premier Division, um, he has obviously uh, announced himself to to some scouts at such a young age, and they have been looking at him. and And to be honest with you, last year he was in absolutely woeful form. He he had a kind of a second season slump for for uh, Laurie last year, and um, he had very poor form. And um, when we look. You know, he 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 was just average. Didn't really bang in the goals that he's scoring this season, and uh, it was a real uh, kind of leap of faith, I suppose, for the manager to retain him, and uh, not to retain him in the sense of uh, you know that they were going to flog him. They certainly won't. They knew he had talent, but to retain him in the team and to maybe uh, build the team more around him and more to his skills, putting him in, putting him wide at times, putting up up front as well with the with another player and. Um, with another player as well, helped him a small little bit. And this season, he's got 10 goals in 13 league games so far. So it has worked. And it shows the perseverance with strikers, specifically young strikers as well. Perseverance with them can work, can break out. And uh, he seems to be having a fantastic season in complete contrast to his season last year as well. Um, last year, he he underperformed in a lot of areas, underperformed in, um, in XG. Um, and when... You guys will have heard me discuss XG very, very infrequently. And I, I particularly only look at it when you're looking at a player's full season history, uh, because I think that that gives a better snapshot of it. If you're going to be looking at XG per half of games, you can see that with your eyes, whether chances are good or not. But when you're looking at it over, over a bigger sample set, I think it's it's, it's more uh, more beneficial. But he did underperform um, with regards to it. But it was ma- like, I, I'm... I was speaking to somebody that this um that, that we've 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 had on the podcast before, um, and they mentioned to me that it was very difficult to pin down the root cause to any of his underperformances. Um, a lot of it was down to just bad luck, was what they felt as well. But also, um, it was a confidence issue. Young player, twenty one, just not even twenty two when when the, when he um he he uh, started to uh, I suppose have this bad luck. Um, but he pulled himself out of himself out of the doldrums, and we can see it this season that things are going a small bit a small bit better for him as well. Um, positionally, uh, for somebody like this, he's predominantly played on the right hand side of a front two. Um, Lorian play a five three two or a three four, uh, a three five two at times. Um, so he's predominantly played as that kind of that right forward. So he does play up top in a two, which is one of the reasons why I'm even uh, wanted to take a look into him. Also, I must I must apologize. Somebody asked me to look into this guy two weeks ago, and he wasn't even linked to Aston Villa. Um, I put a call out in one of our podcasts that we did. If anybody wanted me to look at a player, I meant to write down. I meant I meant to go back and check to see who it was. So if you are listening to this. I hope that this is uh, that, that this is to your liking. So as you say, he plays as a kind of a right-sided striker uh, in a front two. He's left-footed as well, um, so he likes to cut inside. But um, and he does score the vast majority of his left foot. But his right foot isn't just for standing. He can use that as well. Um, doesn't because he plays on the right kind of. 
to the right hand side of a front two doesn't get involved in that aerial game uh, an awful lot actually hasn't really done it for the last 365 days anyway judging by his statistics and um, does score some goals with his head number of goals have headed goals he scored escapes me at the moment um but the fact that he is uh <clears throat> uh, but he he is um, he's he is a, a good left footed uh, threat up top as well, which is uh, wh- which is good. And as I say, he scores a lot of the goals with his left foot. Um, let's let's take a little look. He, he kind of thrives when the ball is in. He's one of these players, and I feel like I'm saying this about all the players that Aston Villa have been linked to it because I kind of said it about Turam as well, but. He thrives more so when there's space to attack him behind. So if we come up against a team with high lines, and this is something that you'll notice why I'm kind of pausing when I say this, because this is something that we kind of already have already with Nolly Watkins. But this guy's scoring rate with regards to his amount of shots taken, uh, shots taken to goal percentage is an awful lot higher. Um, he's missed six big chances over the course of the last uh, over the course of the last 365 days, which isn't massive by any manner manner or means. But he doesn't take an awful lot of shots. When he does shoot, he score. He he gets them on target at about 54. percent Actually, what am I doing? Why am I talking to you like this? Why don't I just bring up his slides here and we'll take a look at him, um, and, and we'll see because here he is, Terry Muffy. Yes, so uh, it doesn't take an awful lot of shots. Usually he shoots sparingly uh, on just under two shots per game. But he gets 53.8% of his shots on target. And we can see that puts him right up in the top echelons of strikers in Europe. Uh, top five leagues in Europe, top however many leagues in Europe, puts him right up there. Uh, goals per shot as well is right up there at 0.27. Uh, right up there, 98 percentile of, of strikers within Europe. So he's a very efficient striker. But remember what I said previously is last season as well, he did have that slump in form. That slump in statistical form, I think, an awful lot as well. A lot of it was down to bad luck. And what I what you could look at this two ways. I don't know. I I, I don't know this player in, in his uh, as as much depth as maybe Toram or Joe Felix, but you could look at it in two ways. You could look at it that Fair play to him for pulling himself off, up off his bootstraps and contributing 10 goals this season in 13 league games. That's a fantastic return. Or you could look at it and say that how come he couldn't do it in season? I don't know. You guys can make up your own mind. And that, for me, I'm seeing a player that's playing with lots of confidence this season. I'm seeing a player that use, that, that uh, knows how to use his body a small a bit more. And I'm seeing a player that's thriving on... Um, I, I'm, I'm having a bit more of an interactive and more interlink play within within that midfield and coming deep to kind of kind of take passes. Some things that he wasn't doing, he was more of a play on the shoulder player uh, last season from from the limited pieces that I saw from last season. Um, so let's take another look. So look, looking at our spider graph here or our radial graph here, you can see that he's a, <clears throat> he comes in with an comes in very similar to some of our players in a lot of areas. I do apologize. I must have a cough for a second. <coughs> but you can see here that he doesn't take an awful lot of shots. I think sometimes we take a very we take an awful lot of wasteful shots. And what we want is somebody who can finish, a poacher. I thought that Danny Ings might be that poacher, but and he is to a certain to a certain extent. But I don't know does Danny I, I don't know as Danny Ings uh, with the changing in the three managers that he's now had, I really want to see him under Emery. Does Emery allow him to come deep to get the ball a bit more? Does he play him as that more of a focal uh, up top uh, striker himself? I think Mafi will probably end up being that focal up top striker on his own as he matures uh, into if he was to come to England. I don't think he would start out there. But I think he could mature into that striker. He's a big lad, like he's six two. Um, we don't have that type of height in our in our, in our forward line. He, but he's not your your stereotypical. Um, he's not your stereotypical uh, target man. We can see there his aerial jewels one come in 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 the bottom seventeen percent in Europe. But then again, a lot of the balls that come to him in in for for Lyant, when you see them, they're raking balls that come across, hit him on the sideline. And uh, he just, you know, the defender has an ample amount of time to get in front of him and win that ball. So it's not like he's playing centrally and balls have been lumped up to him and he's losing those. Yes, that does happen. But because he kind of plays wide right and kind of comes comes in, uh, in into more central positions, uh, that's that that could be one of the reasons for that. Um, that that I'm not going to call it an alarming statistic, but an outlier statistic that you can see there. And um, pass completion rate has him up there in the top top uh quartile uh 
24% there of players within Europe. Once again, he doesn't get on the ball an awful lot. He's very efficient when he does get in the ball. He's got a good pass completion rate. He's got a, he's got a pretty decent uh, key passing rate. Good good uh, goal goal creating action rate. But you know he's not one of these players that's an absolute workhorse that gets fed the ball, fed the ball, fed the ball. But when he gets the ball, he kind of he kind of uh, he, he does the right thing with it, you know. He's gonna he's gonna do the right thing with with it seventy four point six percent of the time. If you if you want to take pass completion as being the right thing with the ball, so he he's a different type of player. You can see there his dribble success rate has him right up there at ninety four percent with within strikers in Europe as well, and his dribble completions is right up there too. So you know, there's there's he's he's got a different skill set um, than than some of the players we have. He's actually quite. He's like a baby to ram in in certain ways. Obviously, look, I, I think I've pinned my colours to the mast. I, I I would like if of all the strikers have been linked to it so far, I think Marcus Turam is gettable. Um, albeit like Bayern Munich seem to want to sign absolutely everybody under the moon. We'll see who they do sign. I don't know whether whether uh Marcus Turam goes to them, but I think the Aston Villa might have a shot at signing somebody like a Marcus Turam. I think they certainly have a shot at signing somebody like a, a Turam Mafe. Um. And but I think there is a drop off between the two players for obvious reasons. You know, Tram has done it at the top level um, in Germany and in France, and uh, Mafia is really only finding his feet this season with a very very good with a good season so far. You know, we've seen it. Um, we've seen players have good seasons uh, for Union Ber Berlin in um, last year. What's the guy's name who signed for Forest? Um, Ewanee. Um, I think is how you pronounce his name. He had a fantastic season for them last year. Took him time to settle into the Premier League. This guy, not that central striker that we've seen. Obviously, when he had that um, had that time in the Premier League previously with Liverpool, there would be a kind of a settling in period, I would say, with this person, but with, with Moffy. But there are talents there. There certainly are. And we're going to take a look at one or two things that um, that I've highlighted here. I don't have an extensive amount of um, slides on on his uh, on his, the goals that he scores or, or, or such. I think I've only got two goals that he scored here, but we'll take a little look at them anyway. Um, oh, actually, just before we go anywhere there, you can see his heat map. It's very much uh, right side dominant, but he does get into the box there. And as we see, when he gets into the box, he gets central. So, you know. If you think about him playing up top, maybe with Nolly Watkins, they would be a pretty decent complement to each other, albeit I think that they would be quite similar um, in some ways. This guy has a bit more height than I think that Aston Villa over time would like to use him slightly different than how he has been used or how he has traditionally been used for Lorient. Um, so let's take a little look at this. This is Lorient versus uh, versus Saint Etienne. We can see here this is his starting position. Saint Etienne had a man sent off in this game, by the way. And uh, Lorient, I think, went down to beat them six two. Um, but you can see starting position right down here in the bottom right hand corner. So when I say he plays wide right, he's playing up top in a, in, in a front three here. The ball is on the far uh, the far touch line, and it's been played into the center here, into the central striker. So uh, once again, I'm going to bemoan the fact that I don't have the use of uh, a video here. But uh, it's been played in here to the cent central striker of the three. And what we can see here, it's just very simple. There is nobody marking Mafia here at all. But what I want to show you is something is, is his left foot dominance, really, and um, when he does get into certain situations. So next slide we'll show here is I say absolutely no one marking him because of the because they're down a man. One of the centre halves for uh for Saint Etienne has moved out of defence. The left back had to cover across, and we can see Moffy here is all and he's all. He won't have it looks like here is that, that he's not gonna have an easier chance. But fair play to the to the left back. Left back makes a double turn, comes back in around, and as we can see here, he gets to front up um Moffy, who in this instance here, it looks like he's going to shoot, shifts the ball to the left-hand side and puts it in the bottom corner. So it looked like for all the world, when we look at the two here, it looked for all the world that he had he had an open goal ch chance here. He kept his composure within the box. We can see it here, left-footed. He, uh, he fakes the shoot and he just sh he shifts it to the side and puts it in between the, the player's legs into the bottom corner. So showed a very showed a good degree of composure in this instance here. He's after breaking his guts to get up there to try and get at that, get, to get into that position the defender to all his credit gets right back at him and fronts him up but in an instance like this i think we've seen with our strikers more often than not this ends up in a corner for an aston if this is aston villa that we don't have somebody if specifically if they're left footed they try and take on that player someone gets a touch to it goes out for a corner i'm like oh my god that was unlucky Muffy 
takes it past him, sticks it in the bottom bottom corner. Show great composure to do so. Once again, it's only one instance of it that, I, that I'm going to show you here, but you can see he is pretty composed in the box. And this next one I'm going to show you as well is another great piece of movement uh, from, um, from, from Mafi. So what we can see here is this is against Olympic Leon. So uh, ball is... I think I've put the wrong slide in here, but let me just see. Oh, no, it isn't. So ball, this is a long ball up here, and we can see I've got uh, Mafi highlighted here. The ball is going to his strike partner. So this is him within a, within a front two, okay? He's actually on the left-hand side, as we can see here. I only noticed this now. He's on the left-hand side. He's crossed over. Um, and uh, the ball comes. The ball is going to the to to his strike partner here. His strike partner ends up winning the ball, and Mafi uses him here as a shield. The strike partner shifts the ball to the right hand side, and we can see it's caused consternation here, um, within within the defence. Um, I've just highlighted his face there. And, and what happens here is that um, Mafi finds himself in the box, took a pass to the defender here, as we can see, looking backwards. Mafi takes it into the box. For all the world, every striker's natural inclination here is to try and drill it into the bottom corner here. I think he misses because what you can't see here is the goalkeeper gets really big. But what Mafi does is composure here just to chip it over his legs and it dribbles into the bottom right-hand corner here. One of those finishes that we've been looking for our strikers to make time and time and time again to allow the ball to slow down in the box like this after running at full pelt in here to try and get past this defender and he does get past the defender, takes this little chip finish into the bottom corner. I really like the goal. Um, I'm sure if I was to look at him an awful lot more, I'd find instances here where these are blocked. But this is the type of composure that we're looking for, that I'm looking for in a striker that would set them apart from an Ollie Watkins or a Danny Ings. I don't know whether a Cameron Archer can do it yet. Um, I don't know whether he can whether he can finish the ball like this yet. I've seen him arrow them into the bottom corner from outside the box. Seen him head the ball. Absolutely great, brilliant finisher. Um, I just don't know. I don't know if he has this type of a finish in his box. But I, I, I like this, uh, this strike from from Mafi. As I say, I, I'd like to dig, dig deeper into him. Obviously, if Aston Villa do sign him, I will, I will dig deeper into him because he's a he's a really interesting um, character, um, or he's a really interesting study. And you know, with with his youthful age and the fact that he's playing in the French league. Um, he's not somebody that I have watched an absolute ton of. Maybe about four of his games, I think, I've, I've, I've watched. I actually watched one, by mis not by mistake, it just happened to be on um, BT about six months ago. And when that person whose name escapes me asked me to do this video of him, I went and I watched two more in the scouting software that I have. So that's three, yeah. So I've watched about three games of him. So by no means is it an in-depth study in him at all. Um, let's take a little look at some of your comments. Matt, thank you so much for that, Matt. I really, really appreciate it, man. Really, really appreciate that. Um, uh, Camera Baby t says about Emmy Martinez. Unfortunately, Emmy's performance in the World Cup is likely to see him attract offers from elite clubs. Uh, I don't see him with Villa next season. 100 million starting price. 100 million starting price. We can name our price now, which is fantastic. And uh, as I say, um, if he goes, he goes. Uh, he goes with my blessing. Um, but. Uh, People who are going to sign them are going to have to pony up, and I like that. I like that. This this club, do, it doesn't seem to sell players for cheap, good players for cheap, should I say? And let's hope that that continues. Um, where else are we? Uh, Josh says this. Good to see you, Josh. Um, if there's any chance that you could uh, maybe overturn the fortunes of the Cleveland Browns, that would be fantastic. I'm sick of watching them at the moment. Uh, but Josh says that overall, who knows which of these names comes in, but the constant links to strikers certainly feels like we're checking in the ton, which likely means one will. I absolutely 100% think there will be a striker come in. I think that we're we're lacking something different up top. Um, uh, when I, you know, we're lacking a big body, a bigger bodied striker. I still, as I say, I'm not denigrating Cameron Archer when I say I don't know what he has uh, in the locker. I just don't know what he has because he hasn't played um, uh, a massive, a massive um, uh, sample set of games yet. I hope he does turn out to be absolutely brilliant. Like the, the Preston North End podcast that we had on uh, the Butter Pie podcast, they spoke about him in raving terms. We haven't seen it for Aston Villa this year. I hope he does get minutes, but I do think that another striker will come in as well because I think um, I think that we do need something a small bit different up top. Um, and uh, specifically, if we're going to be playing two up top, we can't just go into games with only three strikers. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that that's one. Um, 
that's that that's one of the reasons why we're looking at this. Um potential of him and Archer asked Matt Hanlon. I I'm not sure. There could be two completely different types of players, I think. Um this guy obviously like like when we talk about potential for Archer, I think it's fair to say that we don't know what he can do in the Premier League, whereas we know what this guy can do in League One. And Lorient will go out and beat Preston North End, I think, every day of the week. Man, well, maybe that's probably unfair to say. That's unfair to say. But I think they beat them more more than not over a ten game um over a ten game series. And also I think that it's it, like League One is 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 a better standard than the championship. Or maybe I'm not wrong to say that. I don't know. I don't know. But it's certainly not the farmers league that some people say that it is. Um and this guy has gone and done it. He's 32 goals in 83 games for uh, for Lorient. So I would have to say that this guy at this moment in time is a better striker from what I what I know of uh, than, than Cameron Archer. I certainly and 100% hope that Cameron Archer's development um, is, is expedited over the next few months. And I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. And if he's good enough to play in the Premier League, I think we'll get minutes for him. And if he's good enough to be the striker that we all hope he can be, I think everybody... The, it, that watches Aston Villa will be absolutely thrilled because uh, we all love one of our own, don't we? We all absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, as I said, they do think big things of him in B6. So hopefully, um, and once again, as I say, you know, we're going to need four strikers. We need we need another striker, even with even with Cameron Archer. I think we need another striker as well. Uh, Richard Cack says, um, brilliant that we're looking at young players again. It's all upside in terms of likely development, the possible sell on. Even if young players aren't quite good enough, you can get good money back. Yes, I agree with I agree with that. Um, although I will say Unai Emery does like to sign an older player or two to instill that. I'm not going to say fatherly figure. Okay, I'm going to say fatherly figure within a team. He's done it throughout his career. I'm not averse to a team. To, to somebody coming in maybe midfield that's a bit older they can come in to control games a la we did with, with Yedinak. Um, I'm not averse to maybe an older striker coming in if you do want if people if we do think the Cameron Archer is going to be as good as as he can be um and also I don't I, I don't think I think one of Ollie Watkins and Dan Danny Ings won't be here next season anyway. So I think, you know, even if we were to bring in a younger striker now, it may not be for today, it may not be for tomorrow, it might be for next year, but but I don't, I personally don't think we can afford to do that. And I would be okay with bringing in a 27, 28, 29 year old striker on a short term, uh, for a short term situation, provided that the long term um, planning is in there as well. But yes, I agree with you, Richard, younger strikers, younger players will always be the soup du jour for me. Um as I say, because because you just need them. You need to have them there. You need to have that sell on. You need to have that that upward trajectory potential with those players as well. So I 100% agree. 100% agree. Um, Peter Smith says, Wilson seems quite the talent. Yeah, I hope so. Like, in speaking to um, the Rangers Rabble podcast about him some time ago when we when we first signed him, um, you might remember those guys were on when, when Stephen Gerrard first came down from, from Scotland and I, and I messaged them and they said he is the real deal. Um, uh, Rory Wilson scored a couple of goals against um, against Brentford and looked really, really good. Yeah, so hopefully once again, he's only 16 though. I know if you're good enough, you're old enough. Um, and, and that's probably something as well that you can see like Louis Barry was wonder kid. Uh, on everybody's uh, everybody's lips, scored a fantastic goal against Liverpool, but loans haven't been kind to him, and application has been uh, was. Well, I think. Sorry, I don't want to do. I don't want to say say anything um, ill of him or anything like that. But uh, I think one of the managers said that that he didn't fit into his system uh, when he was on loan. But I'm open to correction on that. So maybe he could be somebody that might come back to Aston Villa and we might look for another loan for him. Maybe even utilise him, uh, utilise him ourselves, somebody like Louis Barry, as I say. But it's good that the club are, are signing young talent, um, as you mentioned, uh, in the likes of uh, of Wilson as well. So that's going to do it for us tonight, guys. That brings us up about just about a half an hour. This is an impromptu podcast. Thanks so much, everybody, for popping out. We're going to be back tomorrow. I think it is tomorrow that Paddy is. Maybe it might be Thursday. Thursday with, with Paddy. Um, he's uh, away at work at the moment, and we're going to be discussing all things World Cup and anything that pops up in the Aston Villa world as well. Should any links or any or any transfer rumors pop up too, um, we will pop, we will jump on with them to try and look at what those players are and what they potentially could bring to Aston Villa. Um and then going forward, we will have the, is this transfer rumor shite? 
or might we sign him kind of that's going to be our rating so i think this person is probably is this person is a might we might sign this player i don't see any barriers to to this player being a, a viable aston villa target other than if somebody better than him becomes available so from that point of view we're going to put this in the might category and uh, we'll see what happens. It could just all be paper talk, and it most likely is. But anyway, at least now you know us well a bit more about three Muffy. And if he does sign for Aston Villa, you heard it here first. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Mind yourselves, mind somebody else. And uh, until next time, all that's left to say is up the Villa. Mm-hmm.